Hi there, I'm Martin from AppMaster.io and in this tutorial, I will show you how to use the external API requests on the platform. In this case, we'll be building a simple web application, which will query the current price of Bitcoin in US dollars and output it to the screen. We'll be using the Alpha Vantage API for this. To actually start building our API request, let's head to the business logic section and external API requests tab. Here we'll give our request a name and you can also input a description. Over here, we'll be able to define all of the parameters for our API request, such as, for example, URL parameters, headers, the body, the method that we are going to use, the URL, and the specific response, the response form that we'll be getting. Okay, so for this tutorial, we'll be using the Alpha Vantage API documentation. Uh, keep in mind that the process will be different for every API that you use. So you will have to consult the specifics of the API that you are using, using the official documentation. In this case, we are using the currency exchange rate function, which will be, which will give us the current exchange rate of a specific currency. In this case, Bitcoin to USD. As you can see, it has several parameters, such as the function from currency to currency and the API key with which we'll be identifying. Here we can see some examples of how to use it. As you can see, we put all of the URL parameters over here, such as Bitcoin to, in this case, uh, CNY. And as the output, we get a JSON um, object with all the different information um, from our request. Perfect. Let's take this and define it inside of um, AppMaster.io platform. The method that we're going to be using is get, as we're actually getting the information uh, from the server. And the um, URL will be the following. alphavantage.co query. Fantastic. Now, in this case, we are not using any headers, nor are we using any body. In this case, we will only be using the query parameters. Let's define them. We have function, which is actually a string. We then have from currency, which will also be a string, to currency, again a string, and finally the API key. In case that you need to define a more complex request with data objects and fields within those data objects, uh, you'll be able to use uh, a virtual data model inside of the body. Let's see how that works. In here is the type of you choose model or model array if you need that. And when you add this parameter, you'll be able to define uh, more keys inside of that specific data object. and uh, essentially nest these, uh, these parameters uh, as need be. Perfect. Uh, let's now continue with uh, our request to alpha, alpha Vantage. Uh, in the settings, we'll not be using SSL and we won't be changing any timeout settings, also you can do that uh, over here. And before we actually uh, proceed to defining our response, uh, let's uh, test our request with some sample uh, data. So we test our request. Uh, by the way, the difference between URL parameters and query parameters, uh, you can read more about that in our documentation. So the function that we're going to use will be currency exchange rate as per the documentation. The from currency will be BTC and the to currency will be USD. Now I have already created a demo API key and we'll put it over here. You can do it for free on the Alpha Vantage uh, website. Execute request. And as you can see, everything is working great. Uh, we get a data object, real time currency exchange rate, and within it, we get uh, more fields uh, with the value that we want is this exchange rate over here. Perfect. 
Now, what we want, uh, what we can do here now is instead of manually defining all of the fields inside of the response, we can auto fill it with the response that we got over here. So let's do that. As you can see, automatically we have auto filled the headers and the body with all the necessary information. We can do the same here with the request in case that we have a request in JSON in JSON format. Fantastic. We have defined our API request. Let's save it. And now let's head over to our business logic section and create a new business process to actually triggering that external API request. You can notice now that on this left sidebar, a new section has been created for API requests. And here we have, we can call the API request with the specific body headers uh, and query and URL parameters. Now to actually define all of these, we have specific functions created as well in the model functions with which we'll be able to make uh, these uh, parameters. In this case, adjust for the query ones. So let's find them. Make BTC query model in from the specific values that we have defined inside of our external API request editor. Let's proceed with that. So first of all, we want to create our query model in. And in this case, all of these will be, will be already predefined. So the function, as said before, will be currency exchange rate. The from currency will be USD. The to currency will be, oh, sorry. Uh, the to currency will be USD and the from currency will be BTC. And the API key will be the following. Fantastic. Obviously you can define these uh, values dynamically, but in this case, we'll be uh, just doing it all statically. Let's connect it. And the output will be going to the query input in the API request. Now, in this case, we don't have, we didn't have, we didn't define any body headers or URL parameters. So we don't need to create them and input them. In this case, the API request will work without them perfectly fine. Fantastic. On the output, um, the first thing that we want to do in this case is actually check that the response status that we get, the response code uh, is uh, 200, which means that our um, function, our API request has been performed correctly. To do that, we, we, we can expand the response status output from our API request and then um, compare it to uh, the code of 200. Let's do that. So expand BTC USD response model out. And here we have the code. Perfect. Let's compare it to 200. So with a default value of 200. And then use an if else block to split our business process. In case that our code is 200, the business process will flow to the true connector. Otherwise, it will go to false. So in case it goes to false, we want to write to the log what code did we get. And as a label, let's put BTC USD code. And then finish the business process. In the case that everything has been performed correctly and we get the response code 200, we would like to expand the body that we are getting from our API response and then find the specific exchange rate to output it into our web dashboard. Let's do that. We find expand BTC USD body model out in this case.
And as, as you can see, we get the one data object that have that we have defined in the response, which is the currency exchange rate. Now we have a specific, again, um, function to expand it over here, body model out, real time currency exchange rate to actually get all of its values. Let's move it up a bit. Just like that. And as you can see, we have the exchange rate over here. Fantastic. The only thing left to do now is to convert it from a string, as you can see, we get a string um, to a float. And just like that, and just like that, we get uh, the final value of our exchange rate, which we can output from the business process. And, and the business process. Fantastic. Let's review our business process and then go on to create our web dashboard. We start our business process. We create a query model in with some predefined values. We then call our API request with this query. We expand the response status model and see if the code is 200 meaning that everything has been performed correctly. In case that it is not, we write to log the code that we got and we end the business process. In case everything is fine and the code is 200, we expand our body from the response, getting the data object that we have currency exchange rate. After that, we expand it and get all of its fields. We then convert the exchange rate from string to float and output it from the business process. Fantastic. Let's go on to create our web dashboard. Before we're able to actually create the web dashboard, we have to define a new endpoint to actually access our business process. So let's do that. Let's go to our endpoints tab and create a new API endpoint, which will be a get request. And the URL will be, let's say BTC USD. Doesn't matter in which user group uh, endpoint group we put it, and we connect it to our business process. As you can see, you know, there are no input variables, as all of them are static in this case, and the output variable is the rate um, with the actual rate of our currency. Fantastic. Let's now go to the web apps, to our admin panel, and create a new page. Let's call it. BTC USD and choose a nice icon. Fantastic. And over here, uh, let's actually create um, a card, uh, which we can find over here. And as the, the data input, the data binding will be uh, the user get BTC USD endpoint that we have just created, and the field will be rate. Now here we can also enable it for auto update every specific um, interval, but in this case the API key has some the free API key that we are using has some limits, so let's just update it with a button. Let's also rename our title. And save. Perfect. Let's also create a button with which we'll be able to update this information. Let's name it update. And in triggers, on click, we will add an action for loading data for our card. Save. Now everything is ready, so let's save our changes and publish the application. And let's see how the published application looks like. We go into the home tab and access the server URL of our deployment plan over here. We go to our Bitcoin USD page. And as you can see, we have live data um, of Bitcoin against US dollar. At any point, we can also update the information by clicking this button.
One last thing that I want to mention is that the API request, when it is activated, automatically logs some of the information into our logs for the deployment plan. We can access them on the stats and logs tab over here, choose our deployment plan and go to application logs. And if we now search for API, request, As you can see here, we'll be able to find uh, some information about this request, such as the address to which we are making the request, as the body, the request body that we are using, in this case null, the status code, and the actual response that we get from the server in JSON form.